So in this paper, we adapt a methodology that was originally designed to look at social foraging behaviour in great tits in Oxfordshire at feeding stations. Uh, and our initial question behind this was, can we adapt this methodology to understand something about animals that are not attracted to somewhere, but that happen to be moving through spatial arrays of receivers, like our sharks are? So in that process, we adapted the code, we built in modifications and tested all of those things along the way. And in order to determine whether this methodology was able to capture what we think it was capturing in this, in this system and with these sharks, we simulated very structured data. So we, we created data that had a strong social structure that we already knew before we ran it through our analysis to find out whether what we got at the end was consistent with what we thought we were putting in. And that was the key to understanding whether this was actually um, a robust method for understanding social interactions. We had 44 tagged sharks in this study. They are all tagged with 10-year uh, transmitters that just give off a, an acoustic ping. Uh, and those sharks are then moving within an array of 63 acoustic receivers that are located on the seabed and are stationary. And as a shark moves within up to 500 meter range as one of these receivers, a time and a date stamp is recorded for that individual at that location. And it's from that data and the patination of that data that we're able to actually infer something about their social behaviour. So from that data we found that there was some structuring within the social interactions of this species. Uh, that if you look at the chronology of arrival and departure times of these animals as they move through this array, you, uh, we found that there was a degree of leadership behaviour. Some individuals had a tendency to lead while others had a tendency to follow and that sex was predictive of that, that leadership behaviour. So we tended to see females leaving or, or moving to an area before males and that the males would then follow. It's not unusual. It's, uh, we often find that there is sexual harassment behaviour between males and females in, in many shark species. Uh, mating in sharks is typically quite aggressive, so it pays often for the females to avoid the males at times when they're not reproductively active or they don't want to mate. Um, the, this ecological component of the study was just based on a short section of our three years worth of data. And so we we plan to explore this idea of leadership and, and sexual segregation further by using much longer periods of the data that we have. So from the data that we put in, the leadership uh, result was surprising uh, and interesting and it was, as I say, using this, the chronology of arrival and departure times at each of these locations that we were able to infer that leadership behaviour. However, a caveat of that is that we, we do need to put in uh, much larger sections of the data and look at this, these types of analyses repeatedly through time to understand the ecological importance of them. Uh, the fact that the data were quite structured and enabled us to use this method in the first place because it essentially relies on a Bayesian inference method to determine clustering patterns within the time series data. Uh, so the first port of call was to understand whether our data is actually suitable for this type of analysis, which it was, um, so that, that was useful. There's scope to use these methods for understanding social interactions in many different species using our standardised data. It's quite simplistic data, it just relies on a location, an individual and a time. So there is potential to go back and revisit some of the old data sets using this same technology from the last 20 years or so. However, it's very important that the limitations of this method are also recognised when putting these in. It's easy to produce an output from these types of methods without necessarily understanding how and why that, that output has arrived. So it's, it should be used with, a, with caution and it's worth remembering that it's an inference method. Ideally what we'd like to do is be able to measure social interactions in the marine environment and this is, some, this is a way of understanding or inferring social interactions as opposed to actually being able to measure them, which currently we're still uh, some way behind the terrestrial environment where it's much easier to measure fine scale social interactions. So that's worth remembering given the detection ranges of some of the receivers that we're working with.